Good afternoon and welcome to this meeting of the Oklahoma City Planning Commission. Um, I'm going to call this meeting to order and just give just a, a brief um, housekeeping items here. Um, let's see if we can fix the microphone though. Um, uh, first of all, if you're interested in addressing the commission, please fill out one of the forms that, that are located outside or I don't know, Jared, if you have any of those forms as well available. They're all outside on the, in the front desk. Um, when you come to address the commission, you'll have five minutes to address the commission. Um, and we ask that if you are here with a large group, it doesn't look like there, have any, there is a large group today, but um, we just ask that you uh, have a spokesperson speak for on behalf of your group. Um, we also ask that we also reserve the right to, to limit any repetitive comments. Um, once, you've, once your neighbor has made a point that you agree with, you don't need to make that point again. We will, we will still take both, we'll take it into consideration. Um, the most important thing to remember is to uh, please be respectful of each other, please be respectful of the commission and respectful of the process. Um, so with that being said, let's start our agenda with the receipt of the minutes from the February 23rd, 2023 meeting. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to receive the minutes from the February 23rd meeting. Commissioner Claire has moved that we receive the minutes from the February 23rd meeting. Please bear with us. We're working through the technology. Got it. That motion's been seconded by Commissioner Powers. Please cast your votes when available. I have to refresh, I'm not seeing it. Okay, we'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a roll call vote. Um, again, the motion is to receive the minutes from the February 23rd, 2023 meeting. That motion was seconded by Commissioner Powers. Um, Commissioner Claire, how do you vote? Yay. Commissioner Powers? Yay. Commissioner Fraley? Yay. Commissioner Privet? Aye. Commissioner Hinkle? Aye. Commissioner Govine? Yay. Commissioner Noble? Aye. Commissioner LaForge? Aye. I also vote aye. The motion passes unanimously. We're now in line for continuance requests and we'll just begin with uncontested continuance requests. Item 26 is case PC 10867, defer to March 23rd. Item 27, case C 7530, defer to March 23rd. Item 28, case C 7524, defer to April 13th. Item 29, case SBUD 1500, defer to April 13th. Item 30, SBUD 1492, defer to May 11th. Item 31, case C7410, defer to August 10th. Item 32, case PC10853 has been withdrawn. And item 33, PUD1935 has been withdrawn. Excellent. Is there anyone here wishing to be heard on any of those items? Yes, Mr. Chair, David Box 522, Colcord Drive. Item 27, um, we actually need to make that requested continuance to the April 13th meeting. Uh, rather than the 23rd, Mr. Work, who represents the uh, protesters, has a conflict on the 23rd, so we need to move it to the April 13th. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard on any of those items? Seeing none, I think we're ready for a motion and amending that, uh, mm -hmm. that item 27 be continued to the April 13th meeting. Uh, I move to grant the uncontested continuance request as read and amended. The motion is to uh, approve the uncontested and continuous requested, requests as amended. Um, that motion has been seconded by Commissioner Powers. Please cast your votes when available. And the motion passes. We're now in line for new continuance requests. Item 22 is case PC 10870, defer to March 23rd, and item 25, case SPUD 1494, defer to April 13th. Is there anyone here wishing to be heard on either of those items, item 22 or item 25? Seeing none, we're ready for motion. I'll move to approve the new continuances as read. The motion is to, uh, to continue to grant the new continuance requests um, as read. It's been seconded by Commissioner Powers. Please cast your votes when available. Commissioner Powers, I'm sorry, my, my thing hasn't come up. Uh, yes. Ah, there it is. Let me see who. 
I'm going to switch the presentation. And the motion passes. We're now in line for the uh, consent docket. Item one is case C7537, final plat of OKC 152159. Uh, being, uh, this is located west of South Council Road and south of Southwest 59th Street. Item two is case C7538, final plat of Quail North, located east of North May Avenue and south of Northwest 150th Street. Item three is case C7539, final plat of Autumn Park Second Edition located north of East Britain Road and west of Air Depot Boulevard. And item four, KC 7540, final plat of Bella Rose, located north of Northwest 150th Street and east of North MacArthur Boulevard. Is there anyone here wishing to be heard on any of those items? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You have five minutes to address the commission. Please give us your name and address for the record. I'm Sally Henderson, and uh, I have the property immediately east of the uh, Autumn Park proposed addition. Okay. okay, we can pull that one from the um, consent docket and just go review that case. That'd be okay. Okay. Assuming the commission's all right with it, we can discuss it. Okay. And so then you'll have another opportunity to address us. The applicant will have an opportunity to explain um, what they're doing with this final plat. And then we'll give you an opportunity to, to address your concerns and then the commission will vote. Okay, so plan. I just get to go ahead and tell you why I'm here then. Is that yes. correct? Here I go. Okay. Then, well, no, then. No. When we start, when we hear just that case, right now we're just looking at the <sighs> consent docket as a whole. So okay. now that I know that you have a concern, yes, I do. we'll pull it from the consent docket, and then we'll have, when we consider the rest of the agenda, we'll go straight to that item. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard on any of these items on the consent docket? And then I think we're ready for a motion. And we can remove item three from the consent docket. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to uh, approve the consent docket, uh, excluding item three to be heard individually. The motion is to approve of the consent docket except for item three. That motion's been seconded by Commissioner Powers. Please cast your votes when available. And the motion passes. We're now in line for item three. Is there an applicant present for item three? Do we have an applicant? Here we go. D Doug Clausen with MKEC Engineering for the applicant. Um, I'll be glad to answer any questions, but this is a, just an extension of the Autumn Park. Uh, preliminary plat was approved a couple years ago, and this is the second phase of that. Uh, we're proposing three quarter acre lots. It is served by water. Uh, the uh, sanitary sewer will be individual on site systems, uh, aerobic systems, and uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, this is in Ward 7. I, I do not have any questions. Does, any questions from commissioners? And we're happy to hear from you. And you have, please again, give us your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes to address the commission. Okay, I really just have some questions that probably could be answered without having to approach or do it here, but here's fine with two. Because I am in the, in the property immediately east, the one that's still zoned AA, there is a huge drainage situation that occurs on my property. It actually is initiated on my property. So all of the water that comes from the north part of that square mile comes through my property on that corner, as you see it. And I, I wish I had a pointer. I could, okay, <laughs> anyway, as you see it. And when it gets into that ravine, it, it is the natural drainage of that whole half of the, of the square mile. That's where it initiates. When it meets the intersection of the proposed Autumn Park extension, it's a very deep ravine. And, and it's the natural flow of water from my property to that one. It's my understanding from the horrible discussion for the first part of the Autumn Park edition that a fence needs to be put up before the building begins, before initiation of that development, there's a requirement that there's a fence that separates my property from the Autumn Park edition. Of course, there isn't one yet, but I have a fence there. It's not a great fence, but it's my fence, 
and I don't want my fence taken out in a long period of time before the fence from the Autumn Park development is put in. I don't want that to be left open because it seems like a lot of people take liberties of wandering around on property and I don't want that to happen. There is a fence that comes across the already developed portion going north to where it stops before the second phase is initiated. I really want somehow to be assured that that fence will go in as quickly as possible. And the other thing is that that fence won't block that drainage, but somehow there's a protection of individuals getting down in that ravine and coming into my property through that ravine because it's a very likely thing to happen. There are lots of children living in Autumn Park Part 1, and I can just see the disaster that could happen if they get into that ravine. I don't want them on my property. It's agricultural. It's wildlife. And when we had cattle, we had a fence that went down in there. It was barbed wire. So materials could get through, and it didn't get blocked by anything. And I don't know what's going to happen in that area now. I'm concerned about that very much, not only for my privacy issues, but before, because of the drainage issues and liability issues if somebody gets hurt. Understandable for what might happen on your property. I yes. think, and I'll, I'll look to legal and, and our, our staff here to tell me, um, I, I think what you're suggesting, your concerns are primarily about um, the protecting your property during, it sounds like during the construction, because I believe once this is complete, I don't think you're, you're having a concern about that. It sounds like you're concerned about what's going to happen well, while they're building. Uh, my first issue, I just expressed my first issue. My second issue is once they're complete. And I don't think there's anything any of us can do about this. But the people who come and live out there in residential areas and aren't zoned agricultural on large acreage that respect wildlife, etc. seem to not realize they're in the city limits and they're not supposed to be shooting guns and they're not supposed to be using fireworks and they're not supposed to be wandering onto other people's property and throwing their trash over the fence to get rid of it. And that has happened with every development that surrounds me now. And I don't know how to stop that. I don't know. I don't know. We've called the police won't address it because we're zoned agricultural. They tell us it's the sheriff's department issue. The sheriffs won't address it because it's happening with people who are in the city's residential areas. And, and just last 4th of July, an actual bullet was shot into the air by someone nearby. And of course, you never know who it is. And it felt when it quit moving forward, they all come back down to earth, as you know, fell right through the carport in the center of a, a group of people that were sitting outside on the 4th of July. Mm. And, and we've been in the city limits a long time. It's not news, you know, and the fireworks are crazy. If you call the police, they say, don't call us about fireworks. We're too busy. I'm sorry. I know, and, and I, there's no police protection out there that's, that's um, I shouldn't say that, it's not like that. If you call the police, they come. But if you don't call the police, there's no um, prowl car, if you will, or somebody that's just there. Someone has already been shot in the Autumn Park edition. Shot. Well, I'm, I'm the very nearest sorry. police is the one at Spring Lake. The police department at Spring Lake is it's too far away. So that's, well, those I, are my concerns. Well, I, and understandable. I would recommend that you stay in contact. I don't know if you have exchanged contact information, but I would recommend that you stay in contact that as you're having concerns, as this property is being developed, that you share those with him specifically. I'd also recommend that if you haven't, and it sounds like you've exhausted your remedies, but I, I, I'm just gonna still make the suggestion that the city action line is a good place to go, perhaps with some of the issues that you're having with, um, with garbage and other issues. I'm looking to staff to tell me any other suggestions that might be helpful. Um, 
we've, we've really addressed every resource we've been offered and nothing is being done. Well, Animal carcasses, loads of whiskey bottles pitched over the fences, children with BB guns, children with pellet guns, clothing, garbage. Well, golf balls, lots of golf balls. <laughs> well, I certainly understand and appreciate your um, frustration, but again, I would recommend that you stay in contact with him. I'm certainly happy to help in any way that I can and, and happy to share my contact information with you as well. I'm certain that staff can help you with that as well. Um, but I, I would suggest that you stay in contact and monitor carefully what's happening with as the construction is, is ongoing. And certainly while the construction is going on, there is no adherence to the noise levels, the, you know, the decibel levels of the noise that's going on. And I understand construction is noisy. That's not an issue. But I, I am literally a half a block away from that. My home is about half a block away from that property line. And I shouldn't be able to hear the words of the music that's being played on the construction sites. I should not have to do that. And it's every day of the week. It's Sundays, Saturdays, and dawn to dusk every day. Any suggestions? Um, if, if there are noise complaints, uh, that's something the city has a noise ordinance, so you can call the Action Center and, and they can take care of that. Um, if it's, you know, I don't know how loud it is exactly, but there, are, there is a noise ordinance in place. Well, we understand there's an ordinance in place, but it hasn't done any good to complain. And every house has a different builder, it's, doesn't it? I mean, those, the houses that are being built are not the purview of the people who are developing the plat. Right, there's typically multiple builders, um, mm -hmm. as there probably will be in this space. So it's well. being addressed one by one by one for 37 houses on one half and 40 something on the other. Well, I, I appreciate it. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't know that we can take action on the things that you presented to us because mm -hmm. our authority only lies within approval of this plat and within the, um, within the confines of that plat. I'm, but I I'm, certainly appreciate your concerns and happy to help in any way that I can. I was made aware of that, that this is not your purview, but I just had to say it out loud to somebody who'd listen. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, could I ask uh, someone, I, I don't know, in, in public works, I'm guessing, uh, the, the concern that she was expressing about um, the ravine and, and there being a way to fence that, that would permit the water still to flow, but not permit human entry, or at least not make it easy. Is that something that we have uh, control over as as uh, construction occurs and or after that point even? Yeah, Barry Lodge, uh, Oklahoma City Public Works. Um, they will not be allowed by ordinance to block that, that channel, that ravine, in any manner, either during construction or after the construction is complete. So they, they are required to let whatever water naturally flows across there to continue to flow. Uh, as far as disturbing the fences, uh, again, that's going to really winds up being between the property owners, but I think they would be re required to leave uh, the adjacent neighbor's fence in place. That's, that's another one of those deals. We, we wouldn't require them to put in any type of a, I'll call it a cattle guard structure to keep animals or people from passing through there because uh, it's, it would stop animals or people from going, but it's also going to catch trash and limbs and debris and stop the water from, uh, from coming through. And so we'd wind up with a flood, it could create a flooding issue if we, if we do that. So even, even some sort of you know, screening, for lack of a better term, that would allow the water to go through, it would still end up stopping up with debris and that kind of thing. Yep. And anything that's put in there that would be, uh, and I'll say solid, even though it would be a, a grate or something like that, would catch the, the uh, limbs and trash and other debris that would come off of that property, and, and it would create a flooding issue on the upstream property as well as when it tries to go around, it's gonna flood the, the residences on each side as well. Thank you. Are you difficult? Um, I, I might 
add that that ravine is already on the Autumn Park half being blocked by a whole bunch of trees and stuff that have been pushed in there during this development and big chunks of concrete. Okay, thank you. And so, I, again, I'd, I'd hope that you two could exchange information as she has concerns that are things that, that you can address, just sure. assisting Absolutely. her with that. Being a good neighbor yep. um, would certainly be appreciated. And again, I'm sorry for the frustrations that you've experienced. Um, any other questions, comments from commissioners? Then I think we're ready for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to approve item C7539. Subject to the technical evaluations. Commissioner Clare has moved to, for approval of C7539, subject to the technical evaluations. And that motion has been seconded by Commissioner Powers. Please cast your votes when available. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. We're now in line for item five. Item five is case C7512, preliminary plat of Province Place Edition, located east of Piedmont Road and north of Northwest 134th Street. Uh, hello, my name is Steve Landy's Landy's Engineering, um, 903 East 35th Street, Shawnee, Oklahoma. Uh, this is the preliminary plat of Providence Place Edition. Uh, approximately three to four months ago, we did an SPUD that is identical to uh, this preliminary plat, and I uh, kind of made a mistake. I always thought that it was either five acres or ten lots that have to do a preliminary plat before the, you know, the final plat, and I was mistaken. It is only ten lots, and we had over ten lots, so we had to submit a preliminary plat as well as a final plat that is coming up next on the agenda. And other than that, uh, we're following all the same rules that we followed and discussed in the, in the, uh, the PUD, SPUD. It is a, a residential duplex development, multifamily complex, other than the one lot, which is T1, which would be a, a small office complex, and uh, just hope to receive y'all's approval. Great, Any thank you. Any questions, let me. Oh, yeah, this is in Ward 1, Commissioner Clare. Um, the only question I had, um, it's really for staff, uh, TE number five is, is limits of no access must be provided along the section line roads, meaning Piedmont Road, um, but it appears uh, that there is the access to T1 uh, indicated on P1, so I just wanted to make sure we've got an either or kind of situation. Are Excuse you, me, Jared. Yes. Do you want to respond? Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe Jared, well, and I'll, I'll, I'll yes, uh, I'll, the, I'll, I'll, I'll stall for a minute. Are you wanting to take for uh, lot T1? Or are you wanting an access off of Piedmont Road? Yes, that actually okay. does have access off of Piedmont Road. In okay. fact, we are because that is more of a commercial lot up in there. We did not want it tying into the gated community. All the community directly behind is actually gated, and uh, we would uh, prefer to keep that one. Where, if you look how that T1 lot extends further to the north along the frontage. That is the driveway to sustain the distance of separation off of Northwest 134th Street. So the objective was to isolate the drive at that one specific location, bring it down the way into that corner. Yeah, Jared Martin, Planning Department. Um, yeah, well, I think we should say for residential lots. Okay. Yeah, um, and it would apply to both Piedmont and Memorial, which isn't there, but technically it's a section line. If it ever gets built, you'd, you'd want the same thing there as well. So. Yeah, yes. And there are no more. There are no residential driveways on anything other than the street, the eternal private street. Okay. So you would be in agreement to amend that TE uh, TE five to say limits of no access must be provided uh, for residential lots along section line roads in the final plats. Absolutely, yes, sir. Okay. And your agreement with all the other TEs? Uh, 
Yes, I actually believe it. I haven't seen. Are there other ones? Oh. There are. There are five TEs. Okay, I would. I did get a copy of those. What are the other ones? Are they? Do what? While they're working that out, I'll remind the audience that if you're wishing to address the commission, please complete the forms that are available outside, um, sharing your name and information. Yes, the other ones are the standards like landscaping out, and yes, we, we have no problem with those issues at all, sir. Okay, great, great. Any other questions from commissioners? I have no one signed up to speak. Commissioner Clare? Okay, I'll move to uh, approve item C7512, subject to the technical evaluations, amending technical evaluation Number five is read into the record. Uh, Commissioner Clare has moved for approval of C7512. Um, that motion's been seconded by Commissioner Powers. Please cast your votes when available. And that is subject to the, to the amendments to the technical evaluation, as read into the record. That motion is passed. Thank you. Don't go too far. We're in line for item six. Item six is case C7513, the final plat of Providence Place Edition located east of Piedmont Road and north of Northwest 134th Street. Uh, Steve Landy's, Landy's Engineering, 903 East 35th Street, um, same subdivision that we just spoke of, thank you. Excellent, Commissioner Clay. Did you receive the technical evaluations for this one? <laughs> uh, I, I'm hoping that we adjusted those in the preliminary plat and that we're all good there. Uh, there are there are three, one of which is the landscape plan submitted with the plat requires corrections and resubmittal. Uh, item one is approval of the plat of subject to Oklahoma City acceptance and dedication improvements or assurance of completion of the improvements and technical evaluation three is separate instruments will be required to be submitted with the final plat for proposed easement lying outside the boundaries of the plat. Instruments will be processed to the city council at the same time the final plat will be recorded by the city clerk. Final plat will not be released until the easements are recorded. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> if you are good with those, is there any other discussion? No one signed up to speak. Any other questions, comments from commissioners? All right, uh, with that, I'll move approval of item C7513, the, subject to the technical evaluation. The motion is to, uh, Commissioner Clare moves to approve C7513. Um, that motion's been seconded by Commissioner Privet. Please cast your votes when available. And the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate it. We're now in line for item seven. Item seven is case PC 10873, application to rezone 319 South Check Hall Road from C3 to R2. Good afternoon, Mark Grubbs, 1800 South Sarah Road on behalf of the applicant. This is a, an approximate 13 acre uh, straight R2 request from C3 to R2, just south of Reno on the west side of Check Hall. Um, there's a substantial amount of uh, R2 surrounding uh, this project in the area. Uh, staff recommends approval. We would ask for your approval and be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. This is in Ward 3. Commissioner Fraley. I, I don't have any questions on the application. It's straightforward. I like that the back half of the property or the west half was used for the residential and the property that is fronting Check Hall is still going to be commercial. So. Um, any other questions, comments from commissioners? We have no one signed up to speak on this item, so Commissioner Fraley. Uh, I move to approve PC 10873. And the motion is to uh, recommend, recommend approval of PC 10873 to City Council. Mm -hmm. That motion's been seconded by Commissioner Powers. Please cast your votes when available. The motion passes. Thank you. We're now in line for item eight. Item eight is KC 7536, preliminary plat of Rose Creek, Red Rose Creek, located south of West Reno Avenue and west of South Check Hall Road. Mark Grubbs, 1800 South Sarah Road, on behalf of the applicant. This is the companion preliminary plat, uh, filing a preliminary plat for the entire uh, R2 and uh, C3 portion uh, of this property. Um, staff recommends approval. We agree with the TEs. We'd be happy to answer any questions. 
Fraley. I don't have any, my question was, do you guys agree with the TEs that are so? I am, I am good with the application. We have no one signed up to speak. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? Commissioner Fraley. Um, I recommend approval on C7536. Uh, the well, motion is to approve C7536. Yeah. Is there a second? Commissioner sure Privet seconds the motion. Please cast your votes on the bill. And the motion passes. We're now in line for item nine. Item nine is case CE1093 application uh, to close a 125 foot radial utility easement on lot 19 and block 14 of Northampton uh, 3 edition east of Northampton Court and south of Northwest 159th Terrace at 15900 Northampton Court. Thank you. Is there an applicant present? Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Stephanie Coulter, present for the applicant. My address is 1503 East 19th in Edmond, Oklahoma. Um, the applicants are simply looking to build a gazebo on their common area um, for the residents' use. And um, depending on your recommendation here today, we'll move forward with a um, survey of the property and have that prepared for city council. Excellent. Um, I will say, and I, I do know that this is, um, this is in Commissioner Noble's ward, but it did come up in our pre-meeting about concerns about the um, pipeline easement. So you might, you might visit with, um, with Barry Lodge in the back um, with Public Works because he may be helpful to you if there's any issue with that. But I think if you're just building a gazebo, maybe that's not an issue. So. Yes, I, I'd love to do that, and I appreciate that um, the gazebo's going to lie only partially in the easement, and they've actually moved the um, plans back to another location as it stands in case this is not approved. So um, we'll move forward uh, if we're allowed. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Noble? I, know, I, don't, <clears throat> I don't have any questions either. So, Any questions, comments from commissioners? Seeing none. I'd like to recommend approval of... CE1093. So the motion is to recommend approval of CE1093 to City Council. Is Subject to the technical evaluation. Subject to the technical evaluations. And that is that motion's been seconded by Commissioner Powers. Please cast your votes when available. And the motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. And again, I will remind the audience that if you're not an applicant, please, and you would like to address the commission, please make sure you fill out one of these forms that are available outside at the front desk. We're now in line for item 10. Item 10 is case PC10872, application to rezone 5925 Marshall Street from AA to R1. Is there an applicant present? Come on up. Oh, come on down, excuse me. Come on down. Hello. Uh, we just um, was hoping. I'm to sorry. Get... We do need your name oh, and address for the record. Keisha Solomon, which was Keisha Jacobs before we got married. But um, we just wishing to build our first home together, the married couple, and hoping that we'll get it rezoned so we can start our forever home. Excellent. Um, this is in Ward Seven. I have no questions, and I'm in total support. Are there any other questions from comments from commissioners? I cannot make a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair. Go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> Move to recommend approval of item PC10872 to City Council. Commissioner Claire moves to recommend approval of PC10872 to City Council. That motion has been seconded by Commissioner Powers. Please cast your votes when available. And the motion passes. Good luck. Thank you. We're now in line for item 11. This is case PC10871, application to rezone 8305 South Santa Fe Avenue from R1 and PUD 863 to AA. I'm ready. You're ready. David A. Duddle, uh, 1208 Remington Road, Oklahoma City. Uh, we own the land here, been there for 26 years. 
raising bucking stock and stuff like this rodeo stock. Uh, found out in January we're not in commission uh, compliance with the uh, zoning, and they said you need to zone it double A, and you're good to go. So after 26 years, we're here to zone it double A. We're not changing anything. Part. We're not building anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're just doing what we do. All right. <laughs> this is in Ward 5, Commissioner Hinkle. Is there anybody signed up to speak? There is no one signed up to speak. This is one of the most unique parts of Ward 5. You're 600 feet from a Walmart and a Lowe's, and you're with big horn cattle and horses, and the kids stop and look. It's a yeah, we get cool 15, drive down Santa Fe. So yeah, we'll get 15 families a week coming by and stopping and looking at the horses and the bulls and whatnot. Kind of like a zoo, but we don't charge. Okay. So, uh, Something to think about, though. I'm coming down there. I'm bringing the family down there. It's a lot of fun. Come on down. <laughs> With <substation>. anybody else, <laughs> I'll move approval of PC 10871. Uh, Commissioner Hinkle moves to recommend approval of PC 10871 to City Council. That motion has been seconded by Commissioner Powers. Please cast your votes when, when available. And the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. We're now in line for item 12. Our bulls appreciate it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> item 12 is case SPUD 1501, application to rezone 16216 Ironstone Place from PUD 1382. Good afternoon, David Box, 522 Call, for, call Cord Drive here on behalf of the applicant. This is a commercial SPUD that is uh, compatible with what surrounds it. There are no TEs. We'd ask for your approval. Excellent. Um, this is in Ward 8, Commissioner Noble. Um, I seem to have no problems with it. There's nothing to it. Um, any other questions, comments from commissioners? Is there anyone signed up to speak? There is no one signed up to speak. Commissioner Noble. I uh, recommend approval of SPUD 1501. Commissioner uh, Noble moves to recommend approval of SPUD 1501 to City Council. That motion has been seconded by Commissioner Clare. Please cast your votes when available. The motion passes. Thank you. We're now in line for item 13. Item 13 is SPUD 1502, application to rezone 1619 Northeast 9th Street from C3. Uh, good afternoon, Thorn Stallings, 3120 Northwest 22nd Street, uh, on behalf of the applicant. Uh, what we're doing here is we're just looking to rezone this from a commercial C3 use to an SPUD. Uh, it's an empty lot. It's set vacant for many decades. Uh, residential use is consistent with the surrounding environment. Uh, the last time that there was anything built on this lot, according to the records we've seen, there were actually two structures, um, so we're kind of returning to that uh, theme. Uh, two structures, SPUD. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, and I, I did meet with Thorne. Um, it, this is in my ward. Um, it's a, one of those nice times where we get to turn C3 into residential. How did this uh, get to C3 in the first right? place? Right. <laughs> it's a very unusual area, the way the area is laid out. Um, That's weird. So it's, it's a good thing, but it's right across the street from a daycare center, so I think a home would be certainly much better than, or homes would be better than, than any commercial property. So I'm in, I'm in full support of this uh, proposal, and we do not have anyone signed up to speak. Any other questions, comments from commissioners? Uh, is the applicant uh, agreeable to the technical evaluations? Uh, yes. Okay. I will move to recommend approval of SPUD 1502 to City Council subject to the technical evaluations. Commissioner Clare has moved to recommend approval of SPUD 1502 to City Council subject to the technical evaluations. That motion has been seconded by Commissioner Powers. Please cast your votes when available. The motion passes. Good luck. Thanks. We're now in line for item 14. Item 14 is SPUD 1497, application to rezone 140 Northeast 14th Street from R3 and Scenic Highway area to SPUD 1463 and Scenic, downtown Scenic Highway area. 
Good afternoon, Mark Zitzow with Johnson & Associates on behalf of the applicant. This is a project we're pretty excited to see happen. It's immediately north of the historic wall court that was recently renovated and won a ULI Impact Award. If you attended, you saw that. Uh, but our uh, client lives across the street from this project and has built the homes across uh, there as well, with the exception of the one furthest west one. That's one of the historic homes. Uh, this area was uh, bisected by I-235, which caused the cul-de-sac on Northeast 14th Street. So what our client is seeking to do is develop the 25-foot wide lots that remain there. They're much shorter than they previously were. They were platted as a 140-foot deep, deep lot. Uh, now they're significantly shorter. So uh, really the unique portion of this application uh, is a front privacy fence. Uh, we've taken a continuance after we received two protest letters uh, from the Lincoln Terrace neighborhood uh, to work out some designs, and that is Exhibit C, Jared, if you could flip to that. Uh, so because of the uh, narrow or the depth of the lot not being as deep as it previously was, uh, we're taking access off the back so there's no backyard. Our client believes that a, a front yard privacy area is necessary to sell these homes. So what we've done is added this into the SPUD uh, that limits the front yard fence to six feet four feet of stucco or masonry material, and then two feet of uh, wood or metal on top of it. In addition, we added a four foot landscape buffer on the outside of the wall to help soften it. Uh, we forwarded this to one of the neighbors who was protesting. She responded with an email, I believe you, ha you should all have received that, uh, which stated that there were no longer concerns from the neighborhood about this project. So with that, we would ask for your approval. Thank you, Mark. This is in Ward 7 in, in my neighborhood. Um, I am strongly in support and, and think there should be an award that we give out whenever they rescind a protest letter. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I just think we should do it. And then maybe that would make them, David, you taking notes on that? Um, <laughs> um, Pretty small budget, I think. Yeah. <laughs> But the it, award it certainly is, makes our lives easier. The award is that he gets approval. Okay, okay that's <laughs> all right. <laughs> if we, I'm open to an award in addition to the approval. No. <laughs> um, I have no questions. I'm in support. Any questions, comments from commissioners? <laughs> Any, um, and no one signed up to speak. I cannot make the motion. All right. Mr. Chairman, I will move to recommend approval of SPUD 1497 City Council. Uh, the motion is to uh, recommend approval of SPUD 1497 to City Council. That motion has been seconded by Commissioner Powers. Please cast your votes when available. <laughs> Got to be ready. Oh. <laughs> and the motion passes. Thank you. Good luck. We're on to item 15. This is case CE1094, application to close the south half of the east-west alley in block four of Chester Hill Addition, uh, adjacent to lots 29 through 36, both inclusive east of Hudson Avenue and north of Northwest 96th Street. Once again, David Box 522 Colcord Drive, uh, on behalf of the applicant. This is a closing application. It's a continuation of CE1079 that was previously approved by uh, planning Commission. There is a TE. We agree to it. And if we're going to hand out awards, it should be something like this. It's so perfectly crafted that no protest even gets submitted <laughs> in the first place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have no questions. Uh, I'm in support. Any questions, comments from commissioners? <laughs> Seeing none, I think we're ready for a motion. Uh, I'll move to recommend approval of item CE1094 to City Council subject to technical evaluations. Uh, the motion is to recommend approval of CE1094 to City Council subject to the technical evaluations. That motion has been seconded by Quick Draw Commissioner uh, Powers. And uh, Quick please draw. cast your votes when available. And the motion passes. We're now in line for item 16. This is SPUD 1504, application to rezone 333 Northwest 96th Street from R1 and SPUD 1429. Once again, David Box 522 Colcord Drive, same applicant and same uh, developer that owns the track to the east that is zoned SPUD 1429. We mirrored the regulations in this SPUD to that SPUD. Uh, there are no TEs that ask for your approval. Um, 
this I have seen, this is in Ward 7, obviously. I um, have seen these similar developments that um, the, the property owner has, has in other areas nearby. It's pretty consistent. Um, with that area that's slowly, slowly turning industrial, which I think is going to be the future of this entire um, space. So, I'm I'm in support of this. I'm happy to take any questions, commissioners. No one signed up to speak as well, and I think we're ready for a motion. All right, I'll move to recommend approval of SPUD 1504 to City Council. And the motion is to recommend approval of SPUD 1504 to City Council, seconded by Commissioner Powers. Uh, please cast your votes when available. This perfectly crafted <laughs> Get it. application, right? Thank you. <laughs> All right, we're now in line for item 17. This is SPUD 1466, application to rezone 4 419 Northwest 25th Street from R4, HL, and UDC to SPUD 1466 HL and UDC. Is there an applicant present? I'm sorry. I worked it out with the discovery. Okay. If you're ready, if you're ready. We were thinking we might continue this case, but I did want to wait until it was heard in rotation to make that decision, so it sounds like maybe we're ready to move ahead. I okay. Think, I think we resolved our, our TEs. Okay. So, uh, Fallon Brooks, 733 Northwest 22nd Street, representing the applicant. Um, so this one was complicated. We already went before historic preservation to get a recommendation, and there, uh, the only caveat to the recommendation was that they wanted the language for lot coverage changed. Um, so we worked that out with city staff, and we went with an open space requirement instead, since we're. We're not changing the footprints of any existing buildings on the site, and it's in a historic district, and so we kind of wanted to leave that to their purview. Um, the language was very deferential to um, HP. So uh, the SPUD language that was put forward had 70% open space requirement, which staff felt was a little bit limiting, so we wanted to go for 50%, which is what the R1 is, um, even though our base zoning is going to be R4M. Uh, and then the minimum lot sizes, we addressed that with our neighborhood um, as well as Historic Preservation Commission. Um, our minimum lot size that's in our MDS is 10 feet and that was to allow for panhandle at the front. We eliminated the parking that was in the front setback, um, which really pleased HP. Uh, we allowed for some more parking without it being, you know, right in front of the front house. And this whole thing was interesting because it's, the house was in such poor condition that we really honestly probably could have gotten HP to let us tear it down. Um, and so we gone through all of that and now worked something out. I think that's workable for everyone. So uh, we resolved our TEs, I think. So, sorry. Okay. It's always nice if we can keep some of these historic homes. Commissioner Powers. Okay, so yeah, we'll have to talk about how we resolved our TEs, but um, uh, one of the things, uh, for me, this application was really mostly about being able to preserve the home and preserve even the rear structure, which ha has obviously been uh, what it's going to be for a long time. They're, they're increasing the number of units, but I'm not concerned about that. They have room to provide parking for that on site. Uh, it was about the front yard parking. That was my biggest obstacle to getting to approval on this thing. Uh, and so I want to be very clear about this. There will be a drive that will go up the east side of the property that will provide uh, access to the back and to the parking that will be for the back. And that will be on site and not in the street. And then there will be another drive that will, that will uh, access off of the, the east, no, the west uh, side, I'm west, so bad yeah. at this, of the lot. But I want to be sure that, uh, that that is going to go up beside the house, I mean, getting the parking out of the front yard, for lack of a better term, I mean, it's just a pad right now, but uh, to restore that uh, is important to me. Yes. So um, something I saw, and I don't even know now what it is because I can't find it, but uh, in, it seemed to indicate that the, that the 
uh, drive on, on the west side was only going to be like up to the front of the house? So in, in my original drawing, it went all the way up uh, the side of the house. The bump out in the and, house, yeah. And um, Historic Preservation's concern was that if we made that uh, parking so deep that they could then they're just going to stack a bunch of cars in there and they're mm -hmm. going to park out in the front anyway. And so that's why they had kind of wanted us to limit it there. That is not in their official recommendation, so I think it does defer to you guys. Um, I hadn't thought of it that way, though. I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to do anything one way or the we, other to encourage the We're happy the parking. either way because we felt like it was, it was a great compromise for us either direction. Um, if we do extend it past the front setback where it is now, it does put our total lot coverage back up, up quite high, which it already is on the site. We're well over what is allowed. Um, and so, so a lot of this was really us trying to work within that. So we're willing to go up the side, uh, but it may be one of those things that, that city staff. Unintended does. consequences. And, and I'll also remind you, we, we also still have to go back before historic preservation for a CA on all of this anyway. We only went before them for the zoning recommendation. So that's okay. still, it's still deferential to them and it was written that way in this bud. So. Then I'll leave it at that. That's fine with me. I can, I can live with that. So we're, we're, at, we're at another TE or I guess an amendment to the MDS that's going to say the open space requirement is limited to 50%. Is that where we are? Yeah, we'd like to add that one instead. Um, well, it changes. The language actually says 70%. That's what's in the current MDS. We want, city staff was afraid that it might limit us a little too much and it might put us right on the cusp of it. So 50% just kind of made the math a little bit more. Plus it's what R1 is anyway. 70% is very restrictive. Yeah, that makes sense to me. So would it be appropriate to say that the open space requirement will be set at 50%? I like that. that. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Anyone here to be heard? No one signed up to speak. Well, then I'll make a motion to approve SPUD 1466 with the addition of TE number four, that the open space requirement will be. But TE numbers one and two uh, should, be, should be taken off. The minimum lot width and, and size. Staff's okay with that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So, I'll make a motion to approve SPD 1466 with the elimination of TEs 1 and 2 and the addition of, however we want to talk about that, TE number 4, um, indicating that the open space requirement will be set at 50%. The motion, com uh, Commissioner Powers has moved to recommend approval of SPUD 1466 subject to the following amendments to the technical evaluations, the elimination of TEs 1 and 2 and the addition of the open space requirement set at 50%. Um, that motion has been seconded by Commissioner Hinkle. Please cast your votes when available. All right, thank you guys. Thanks. And the motion passes. We're now in line for item 18. Case SPUD 1503, application to rezone 1821 Northeast 26th Street from R1 and HNO to HNO and PUD 1503. Uh, good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Taurus Louie. I am with King's Consulting LLC. I am representing the applicant. Um, we are proposing designing a uh, multi or spud development uh, targeted for uh, specifically for veterans. It's in the middle of a neighborhood that also has uh, a few R2, R4s uh, nearby. Uh, the land's been vacant for a while, <laughs> um, but I'm open to answering any questions or concerns. So this is in uh, my ward. Um, I think this, it's important to note that this is a very, it's a different kind of area. Um, number one, on the north side, you have the extensive, you have churches and well, on some large campuses. And then to the west, um, that's the American Legion office. Um, it's certainly a lot of R1 in this area, um, but I think things are going to conti also continue to change as the um, Clara Looper um, Museum is being built about a block away as well. So um, certainly want to help our veterans. Um, this lot is, um, has not been used. I mean, it's been vacant for quite some time, it seems. 
Um, so I'm, I'm in support of this. Um, I would say to the applicant, I would highly recommend, if you haven't already, visit with Councilwoman Nice. Um, I think you should go ahead and have those conversations soon. Um, but I, I am in support of this. Any questions, comments from commissioners? Are there bulls? Are there bulls? I, <laughs> I, I have one minor Please. Uh, <clears throat> point, since this is a new application. <clears throat> Would you be amenable to removing drive it rock from your architecture exterior building finish materials? Uh, I'm sorry. Do you even realize that's in there? I, I didn't. Okay. I'm sorry. This yeah. is this is just one of those technicalities that I've been trying to clean up in some of the language. So you're allowed uh, exterior building wall finish materials of 70% brick veneer, rock or stone masonry, stone, stucco or wood. Got it. Um, in that list, as written, is includes drive it rock, which is e effectively a, an EFAS product. So if we're limiting EFAS to 30% maximum in the following sentence. That would include the, the drive it. So I'm just trying to strike drive it rock from the, the way that it's written. I don't even think you probably. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We're, we're aware of that, but more of a comment maybe for staff even. Is, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. That's my only, only, only concern. Assuming there's consensus with the commission. Is that okay? Sounds good to me. Okay. I trust the architect. Any other questions, comments from commissioners? I think we're ready for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to recommend approval of SPD 1503 to City Council subject to the technical evaluations. And we need to add a TE um, eliminating drive it from the, um, I guess, yeah, eliminating drive it as one of the materials. Yeah. Uh, adding TE4 to strike or remove drive it from the architectural facade materials. And so the motion is to recommend approval of SPUD 1503 to City Council, um, subject to the technical evaluations and the addition of technical evalu evaluation four that eliminates uh, drive it rock from uh, the architectural materials. That motion has been seconded by Commissioner Govine. Please cast your votes when available. May I ask, Commissioner Govine, if, is it that you're wanting to completely eliminate the use of this material? Or simply that it, it sort of moved over into the 30% range instead of Correct. the 70% range. Correct. Okay. I'm just trying to eliminate the conflicting language. I just want to be clear. Drive it is an it. EFIS product. It would be allowed up to 30%, just not 70% and 30%. Okay. So we need to amend the motion for clarity that drive it rock would be allowed within the 30% EFIS materials rather than the 70%. I mean, basically, it, it reads just fine if you just strike that word from the 70% sentence because, because EFIS already is allowed for the 30%. Yeah. yeah. Of yeah. EFIS. Got it. Uh, okay. Basically, I'm just trying to, anytime you see the word drive it, I would just get rid of it because it's either stucco or it's EFIS when these applications come through. Cool. Okay, And the motion passes. Good luck. We're in line for item 19. This is SPUD 1481, application to rezone 904 Northwest 23rd Street from C3 UD and uh, 23rd Street Uptown Corridor. Good afternoon. Mark Zitzow with Johnson & Associates. On behalf of the applicant, I think we have another award-winning uh, application <laughs> before you today. Uh, this is a project on Northwest 23rd and Francis. Right now, there are two existing uh, homes that have seen significant renovations to the front facade. Uh, we come to you with a recommendation of approval from the Urban Design Commission. Uh, we are proposing a multifamily development. The line work that you see on 23rd Street and the on-street parking in the lanes is actually the city's proposed streetscape work. We've been working with their consultant uh, to make sure our frontage aligns with the new streetscape project that is in the works. Um, so with that, uh, we would ask for your approval. Thank you. Um, this is in Ward 6. Commissioner Govine. Sure. Uh, I had the opportunity to meet with the applicant. Um, I reviewed the site and surroundings. Um, you know, Urban Design has recommended approval. I don't have any issues with it. Um, I think it's a, they're asking for a very modest height increase of five feet. 
there's multifamily already uh, existing uh, behind it with some single separated by a, a functional improved alley. I think it's, a, I, I support the case. Uh, if anyone else has any questions. Any other questions, comments from commissioners? We have no one signed up to speak. I also agree that it's a great use of this property, 23rd Street. It's, you know, um, the traffic's heavy. I'd love to see this, this redevelopment in this part of 23rd Street. So I think it's award winning too, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm, I, tempted, oh. I'm tempted to, to tease Mr. Sitsa just a little bit for his steadfast refusal to refer to these structures as historic, but his uh, con condescension to refer to them as homes which, you know, they so are not. <laughs> so, um, but I don't have any problem with the application. <laughs> there were some creative additions to those homes to turn them into businesses at some point in the past. But, uh, well, I will, uh, Mr. Chairman, like to recommend approval of SPUD 1481, City Council. Commissioner uh, Govines moved to recommend approval of SPUD 1481 to City Council. That motion has been seconded by Commissioner Noble. Please cast your votes when available. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner Powers votes yay. And the motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. We're now in line for item 20. Item 20 is SPUD 1498, application to rezone 1800 Northwest 40th Street from R1. Is there an applicant present? There's not an applicant present. We're going to continue this case two weeks. Um, there's a little bit of confusion about what um, they actually are going to build on this. And we have discussed it, but it has not made it in the staff report. I want to be clear rather than not clear. And so I talked to a Mr. Uh, Ryman Philippe before the meeting. He agreed that it was fine to take two weeks only, so to March 23rd. And I'm so I would like to see this case continue. And his presence, his lack of presence here today, I think is a testament to that agreement, so. Okay, I think in the pre-meeting some concerns were brought up, so we might wanna, um, you might visit with Dustin um, about some of the issues with the, the property lines and, and the utility access, and you know, maybe even consider going down to three homes instead of, instead of four, but you know. I All don't. those things are under discussion, so. Okay, cool. I'm all for that. Any other questions, comments from commissioners? We did just approve a panhandle uh, case a few minutes ago. There's only two homes, but same concept that they're doing here as far as utilities in I, and out. I do think, you know, this is, a, this is an issue. You know, when we first started on the process of trying to encourage infill development, especially residential infill development, this is something that came up. It has not resolved itself. It seems to come up again and again and again. But, you know, we sort of pledged to take an approach where we wouldn't at least put up barriers yeah. to infill development. And I think this is one that it's time for us to come to some kind of a firm understanding about. So we'll take another two weeks and see if we can't solve that problem. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, I'm joking. I'm not taking <laughs> that on. But I would like to see it resolved in a way that would not require it to be discussed again and again and again, and, and possibly result in different outcomes. That doesn't seem appropriate. So. Does that fit within the scope of some of our existing plans for study sessions as well? That may be a good opportunity for us to. Um, yeah, we can certainly do that. Um, we'll, we'll take a look and see kind of where that would fit in the schedule when, we, when we're gonna talk about it after the meeting, kind of what our schedule is on study sessions, so. At least it might be good for us to have a little bit of, um, I mean, if, if a staff is going to plant their flag on this, if this is the hill they want to die on, then I think it probably would behoove us to have some sort of a coherent explanation about why that's necessary and how it's really not a hindrance to infill development. Just some consensus, too. I mean, I, I hadn't really, I mean, Dustin was educating me on the issue when, in, in the pre-meeting, so, you know. You might have a comment. Dustin Segre's Utilities Department. I was just going to let you know on our study session on the 27th, this was the exact topic that I was going to cover. 
Um, and I was going to use this case as an example, and there's several other cases like this that we can discuss then. Um, I don't know what the answer is, um, but it is That's posing not encouraging. a yes. <laughs> it is um, it is causing some issues, and I was wanting to you know to bring it up to your attention to see how we can get creative and to be able to help protect the the future homeowner for future troubles in advance and things like that. So we have seen some issues where it has been done before, and issues have arisen. Um, for the homeowner and now they have actually have to do uh, more expensive um, repairs for their sewer lines and water lines because of the situation that they were in um, because of this and so it's just it's one of those issues that we got to find a solution to to be able to help encourage infill development but but do it as such that it's responsible and, and being able to to find all those niches and things like that that we have to be able to look out for so all for that great I won't be at the training session, so I won't get to participate, but I, I look forward to hearing about it. You can just give me your study. Oh, the study session. So we are going to talk about the study session. Okay, I thought it was the training session. Gotcha. <laughs> okay, well, I'll be at that. Um, Commissioner Powers. Did I make a motion to approve SPD 1498? Commissioner Powers moves no, to... No, no. To continue. To continue. To continue. SPUD 1498 to the next meeting of the Planning Commission. Is there, is there a second? I'm sure he'd be happy with that. That motion's been seconded by Commissioner Govine. Please cast your votes when available. <laughs> and the motion passes. We're now in line for item 21. Item 21 is SPUD 1499, application to rezone 2000 Northwest 23rd Street from R1 and UCD to SPUD 1499 and UCD. Excellent. Ms. Tran, my understanding is we asked you to take a continuance a couple weeks ago to go back and um, re, re um, resubmit your application as an SPUD. And so would you like to tell us the, the changes that have been made since then? Since uh, yeah, we, we want to uh, change to SPUD and I will pass last time. Okay, and yeah. so I think I don't know if staff, city staff explained to you um, that there, they had a couple of recommendations to changes to your um, SPUD application. They want to, they're asking us to eliminate any of the outdoor uses that you asked for. So there were several, several uh, of those outdoor uses that you asked for. So for example, outdoor sales and displays, um, participant recreation and entertainment outdoor um, and spectator sports and entertainment. I'm assuming that's a lot. Is that outdoor? Yes. I'm assuming. General is. Um, generally outdoor. speaking. Are you in support of that? Uh, you said the outdoor or the? Yeah, any of the outdoor uses that you had in mind, staff is asking that you eliminate those uses. And, and so the question for the commission will be whether or not to grant that. Are you in support of eliminating those outdoor uses that I named? Yes. Okay. And then the next question is, the staff is asking that any new parking lots be located behind your property. So if you built any new property parking lots with the existing homes, or if you were to tear down those homes and build a new building, they're asking that you, you put the parking lots in the back, not in the yeah, back. Yeah, parking lot. Okay. So you're in support of that. Yeah. Just wanted to be clear uh, about I, that. I, the, the parking lot, you know, whenever somebody they ran it, they will fix it. They will do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Commissioner Govine. Sure. So that's that's the those are the most most of the issues. I think that there's been a couple other things that that I would like to ask about, and that is, um, are you going to keep the houses initially, or? Uh, yeah. You, you plan to repurpose yeah. it. So um, there's some requirements listed in here that are, the wording is if, a, if, if the homes are torn down and a new structure is built. But I had concerns about, regardless of, of whether it's a new structure or it's just redeveloping the site to add parking, if those homes were to become commercial uh, uses, which is your intent as I understand, that would still create a potential nuisance to the neighbors behind you. So I would like to add, um, and this is for, for discussion or comment, but I, was, I wanted to add a uh, requirement that if any new surface parking is constructed behind the homes, 
that would trigger the requirement for site proof screening and a minimum five foot landscape buffer. Yeah. So that, that, that gives a, a little bit of relief to those homes to the, immediately to the south. Yeah. Um, and so that would, I think that would be an additional TE that we could add to. I think um, that's consistent with, with or, the existing zoning, it, right? Yeah, C1 zoning would require that, right? Because it's adjacent to the Okay, residence. so no TE required, just making sure you, you understand that those would be the requirements. If you repave the, the, the back of those homes, I want to make sure that triggers it, not just tearing down the structures. That's correct, us. No, I don't understand. We might want to clarify that. And in addition to that, Commissioner Govine, I did ask our, our resident landscape architect slash traffic commissioner slash vice chair of the planning commission to um, Slash award winner. We're giving away, we're giving out awards today, um, to yeah. give us some recommendations also on the landscape buffer because I was concerned whether that was enough. Yeah, that's a, that's a good good topic. I do have one more point okay, on uses as well, um, but let me let me add one more point on. Um, I think because of the proximity to the homes to our south, uh, bars are a use that I believe would be considered an issue. Um, I'm not trying to pick on eating establishments, sit down, eating establishments, sit down with alcohol, but I would like to ask if you would be amenable to removing drinking establishments uh, from your allowed uses as well. You should remove the tree in the south? No, no. No, this is a separate, separate issue to the, the fence alcohol. and the, the parking. Alcohol? But going back to sit uses down. for a moment, that 8300.33, I believe, okay. um, is probably okay. more intense than okay. it would be. Yeah. You're okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, back to landscape. So, thank and you. then I, I want to come back to uses. I, I think we should, I just wanted to make sure we were clear on each issue. So if we're talking about the landscape buffer, Commissioner Clare. Um, yeah. I looked at it. Um, my concern is, and um, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. Five foot would be minimum five foot width uh, site proof screening. Uh, I'd like to see 10 there. That gives you a little bit more room um, to do at least some um, flowering trees or taller shrubs that can kind of get up and, and be of a height to, to obscure uh, from, the, from the, the neighboring residences. My concern is, is that if they're going to add parking, you've got 20 foot for parking. If it's a two-way drive aisle, you've got 24 foot. And then if, you've, if it's double loaded parking, then you've got another 20. So you need 65 feet of paving, of parking, um, and then a five foot landscape. So that's 70 feet. So I'm just not sure that that 70 feet's there. So if it's only gonna be single loaded parking, mm -hmm. I don't know if that gets, it gets you the required spaces, um, but that would give you the room to do you know, a larger landscape buffer. But if you need spaces, you might have to go double loaded. I don't know if that room's there. I mean, I would I would support making it 10 feet, but relaxing the parking requirements that would be in the underlay is just you can build as much as you can get mm -hmm. on the site. Are there any parking requirements along 23rd Street? That's a good question too. Yeah. Sarah Welch, Planning Department. This is in the Gatewood UCD, so it would just be per the code. Okay. Mr. Chair, I appreciate these details, but do we have protesters we signed do. up for this? We're getting way down. I'd like to hear from them. Good point. So we can add it into what y'all are talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can do that if everyone's amenable to that. Mm -hmm. um, the first person we have signed up to speak is uh, Sharon, Ryan, and Tim Scott. I think they're going to share their five minutes. And you can have a seat while we're allowing the, the uh, data. neighbors to speak. Uh, yes, we both own properties on 22nd Street that back up to this area. And could you give us your names and addresses for the record? My name please? is Tim Scott, 2013 Northwest 22nd. My name is Sharon Ryan, 2033 Northwest 22nd. And you collectively have five minutes to address the commission. Okay. Um, Obviously, our concerns are just what is happening here um, and how will it affect our privacy, our backyards. 
we've worked really hard to to develop our street, get it back up in shape. We've got it down to where we only have a couple of rental properties on the street now. Mostly it's a home-owned occupancy and uh, and everyone's working on their landscaping. We're just trying to, you know, obviously increase our property values, but increase the, the value of, of the neighborhood uh, aesthetically and monetarily. We're just concerned that this could you know, bring a nosedive to all of the work we've done. So uh, we just wanted to express that concern. Okay. I think hopefully you heard from the discussion that we're having that we share that concern. Yes. And so part of what we're trying to do is come up with the right ways to ensure that people can still enjoy the use of the properties on your street while also respecting the understanding that 23rd Street is, is highly intense and is gonna continue to only become more intense. So how do we build in enough respect for both, both needs? Sure. absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Are there specific things that you would like to see incorporated into the SPV that might help the ameliorate impact or? Uh, and I think anything over a single story would be very strongly impactful to our our properties because they would overlook our, our fences into our backyards and our the back rooms of our houses. Uh, at this point, <laughs> you know, we didn't see this coming at all, but Dutch Brothers, you know, built across 23rd Street. We have French doors that look out our back garden and suddenly we have this blue neon sign that shines through our back door 24-7. Uh, that was that was a surprise. So those sorts of things, you know, we just, we'd like to nip it in the bud and keep it from happening before it happens if it's going to be an issue. I think the landscaping is great. I have one concern because obviously I'm a landscape designer and uh, I, you know, put plants in my back garden, but one concern is OG&E has kind of gone rampant with killing trees <laughs> that are anywhere near their power lines and there is a power line that goes through that uh, between those property lines, so we need to be very cognitive that there will be a height limitation uh, from them for what we can do to protect that sight line, so. Your power lines run down that fence line across yeah. your backyard? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. There's an, another concern, I don't know if anybody thinks about, but I live in the alley, and the alley is how I have access to my driveway and also my neighbor. And I just think think that since the, it was going to be business, that there would be a lot of cars or even parking in that alley and parking down on 22nd Street even. I don't know. It just it depends on the business. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. We don't know what it's going to be. So, so and, the, and it, the front lot, I'm sorry, on 23rd, oh, it is. I was going to say, does it, it's, it doesn't include the, the piece of property directly on the alley, but it no, no, it doesn't. But it is for sale, isn't it? It is for sale. They call it a diamond in the rough. <laughs> <laughs> well, would it, would it help uh, assuage your concerns if the lighting for the property were kept below the eaves um, or uh, roof line and if uh, whatever signage there was on the property were also kept below that roof line so that it would not be visible from your property directly. Absolutely, plus any windows or upstairs patios that are two stories tall, they would be looking into our property as well. So there's side alignment and there's parking. I think those are our concerns, plus noise, smell. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I guess I could go through the gamut, but smell, noise, all those things would be issues. So I, I wouldn't think that um, rooftop patios would be appropriate at a location like this. Maybe that needs to be but they're specified. But already, they're already disallowed, aren't they? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I suppose that is one thing that would need to be addressed in terms of uh, if the buildings that are currently existing uh, are removed, that whatever replaces them be single story. That would 
be a huge amelioration, yes. And I think that would be um, you know, appropriate given the scale of what's being built in the area. So it's consistent with the other with everywhere else on twenty third street in that area. I think so too. So I, I would like to see those things added. Um, anything else? Uh, I don't believe so. No, we, we got nervous when we saw the hours like music from such and such to ten p.m. and then on weekends it had no music after two p.m. two a.m. and I thought. Well, I think we're going to eliminate all of the outdoor yeah. uses, so that should okay. be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks a lot. Right, thank thank you. you. And it is just as a reminder to commissioners. You know, while the the uh, trans have not asked for a specific, uh, don't have specific plans in mind. You know, it's just important for us to remember we've got to make our decision based on the the uses that are listed. You know, and and use our imagination about what what could go wrong is sent with with the uses that we're allowing, so we can try to address. And maybe that's a negative way of saying that. Go ahead, Commissioner Powell. Is it appropriate for us to require uh, a specific plan? Uh, in the event the property is redeveloped? What do you think, Jeff? Um, that's a good question. I, do we have a precedent for that? I'm not, not sure about that, Sarah, do you know? I guess it could be triggered in the, by a demolition. Um, we typically only do the specific plant, that's a, a PUD process. We typically only do it for PUDs. I think it might be a pr typically, as I understand, but I think it might be appropriate in a case like this. You know, where where it, there is a, a potential for complete redevelopment of a piece of property. You know, the uses of these buildings as they stand now would be just a completely different thing than for them all to be cleared and something else to be built there. Sure. Yeah, I agree. I'm open and, to that. And the, that kind of alleviates the concern of, you know. We don't really want these homes to be torn down, but that could happen. And even though they're saying that's not necessarily the intent now, if someone did do that and they sold the lot, they'd have to come back mm -hmm. in front of us. And it, you know, it's kind of be and think fancy if we just know, you know, the layout and the traffic flow and so on. I, I think that would be really worthwhile. I think so too. And then we just need to be clear about what exactly we want to review in the specific plan. So, you know, we have to reserve that in advance just in case. And specific, you know. I've never agreed with that. Well, but just, I mean, I, just I, in case. I, I believe that whatever it is that would be in front of us today, if we were reviewing a plan, would be in front of us if we were reviewing a specific plan. So, well, I, let's cross our eyes and dot our. Excuse me, cross our T's and dot our eyes on that. Uh, <laughs> our next speaker is Dane Corber. And please give us your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes to address the commission. I'm Dane Corber, and I live at 2025 Northwest 22nd. That's directly south of, I think, the third house on the plan. Um, when I first got my letter, there wasn't a spud or anything online, so I didn't really get a chance to actually submit materials. But I went ahead and just printed off three pages for you guys. If you okay. Can I hand that out? Yep. So... Kind of what I get from this is it seems like they're trying to put a bar behind my house. Um, it seems like they're trying to put an outdoor bar, too, from the way it's written. They're trying to do hours till 2 a.m., trying to do loud noise. I think you guys have addressed a lot of the things, but just as a concise thing, this documentation I have here kind of lays everything out that I'm going to say. They're trying to change this to C1 Neighborhood District, which as per what it's written in the city code is, is that this is a district limited to the types of uses that will not create increased traffic, noise, or other incompatible factors caused by uses served a larger part of the city. I think if you turn this into commercial, you're gonna increase the traffic in the area. I don't think that, you know, there's just no proposed plan for this. Like, the last spud you just had here, you guys canceled it because they had no plan for it. I don't know how you can approve this with like not knowing what they're gonna do. You're kind of just signing a blank check to them. Um, and also, the goal of a spud shouldn't be to, um, I guess, circumvent policies or lieu of regulations. They're trying to circumvent regulations of outdoor music, that type of stuff. As somebody who lives there, I'm going to have to wake up, you know, at 6 a.m. and go see patients and that type of stuff. And I just, 
want to be able to get good sleep. I can see the houses from my backyard. I have an electrical um, receiving building 20 feet from the fence of the properties. In this, kind of what I moved to remove is, I don't want drinking establishments in there, the 8300.33. I don't want the 8300.54 outdoor sales and display. I don't want participant recreation outdoor. I don't want spectator sports. I just don't want any outdoor things, which you guys did address. For maximum building height, they addressed it. I don't think two stories are appropriate. For maximum building size, the way they kind of write everything is almost if they're gonna redevelop. So what it kind of sounds like is they're trying to redevelop this zone to then sell to somebody else, and it's probably a slippery slope. I'd rather the person that buys these properties go through the rezoning, like the appropriate rezoning of what they're trying to do with it. They're just trying to probably increase the property value of this, sell it, and then somebody else is going to buy it down the line, and now we're just having to deal with more regulations and setbacks. Um, I'd like to add sound requirements. They're trying to do a C1 zoning, but I'd like to keep the R1 sound requirements for the state. Um, for landscaping, it reads upon redevelopment, they'll fix the landscaping. I'd rather upon rezoning, they fix the landscaping. If they're gonna rezone this, fix the landscaping in the area. For signs, they were trying to get signs that were 20 feet high and 120 square feet in area. That's a billboard. I don't really want billboards back there. I think 10 <laughs> feet high, maybe 60 square feet, is probably reasonable for a sign. I don't think there should be any electronic signs in the backyard. I don't think that's gonna help. And then also for parking, it says somehow there's already enough parking for it. Parking is the biggest issue for this. I, I mean, there's some feats that you can do with parking lots. Maybe they'll be able to get a lot more spots than I think, but they might have to tear down one of the buildings. And also in this addendum thing, there's just no nothing to protect the buildings from getting torn down. You don't know what they're gonna do. They might tear down a building and put a parking lot in, which might be a solution for it, I don't know but I'm really worried that this is gonna turn into what the Plaza District does and two streets up, there's a bar and everybody's parking on 22nd Street. Some of the houses here still don't have garages, so people park on the street all the time to go to their homes and then people aren't gonna be able to park in front of their homes. I just think parking's a huge problem too. Um, and the biggest thing is, is drainage too. If they're gonna put big parking lots back there, 23rd Street already floods. I just don't think the city has capacity on 23rd Street to handle any runoff, I think they're gonna to have to put it into the sewer drains, and those sewer drains are 80 to 100 years old. I don't know if they can meet the capacity. And additionally, I just think the hours of operation shouldn't be past 10 p.m. for anything. There's nowhere else like that. There's an R1 zone surrounding all three sides of it. So on the east side, there's this one house that's adjacent to it that's still R1, then to the south and to the west. If you look at the whole area of Gatewood, Gatewood's from Penn to Classen. All the, there are a few businesses that are on 23rd Street to the south, but most of the businesses are to the north, and of that, all of them close at 10 p.m., aside from the ones that are C3, which is like, I think the Raising Canes is C4, and it stays open till one, but aside from that, everything's 10 p.m. So, again, everything's labeled and written in this document. It's a little easier to read it than for me to say everything, but. That's kind of all I have to say. Do you guys have any questions for me or anything? Well, so have, having heard what we've discussed so far, what specifically are you asking for as an addition? Because we addressed several of the things you brought up. Which we eliminated I the outdoor uses. No, the, yeah, you definitely the did. The signage, the height, building height. I think the hours of operation are the biggest problem. I don't want a place right next to my backyard, five feet from it, that's open till 2 a.m. with a parking lot. I think that's dangerous for kids. I think that's dangerous for everything. I didn't buy my house where I bought it to be near a commercial district. I'd rather this not happen, to be honest. But it, I understand that 23rd Street's changing and stuff. I just don't know how they're gonna do that, and I feel like it makes my house unsafe. I just recently renovated my house. I put like $150,000 into it. Like this is, everybody's renovated their houses around here. I just don't think it's a good idea to actually have this done. You're also removing residential areas from a city that's already having problems with residential stuff. Like you could easily fix these houses up for residential. That's kind of all I have to say, I think. So the hours in the street, signs that you guys talked about, the parking, and the landscaping be, being done upon rezoning, not just if they change the existing structures. I think I agree with you on that too. 
Thank you so much. You guys Thank have you. a good day. There is no one else signed up to speak. Um, I don't know if Commissioner Govine, Commissioner Powers, if we're all keeping a good list of, of where we are. Um, maybe we should start back to the landscape. Let's talk about landscaping. Then maybe we can talk about uses, then hours of operation, then, and I think, I think those are the major issues left, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the landscaping, I agree with Mr. Korber. I think we should require the landscaping um, now, I guess, if we're going to allow these new uses. But let's um, talk but, about that. What, what yeah. would that mean? Because one of the yeah. statements that's made is, if there's nothing done, the landscaping is deemed to comply presently. There's currently four detached garages at the backs of those properties. Mm -hmm. So when we say the landscaping will be done now, I'm not sure how that gets interpreted. Yeah, it, that's you know, because a 10 foot buffer, it's like part of its grass, part of its little probably shed like garage structures. Staff thoughts on that? I believe with the change of use permit, Curtis Liggins with subdivision zoning, with the change of use permit, they would be required to bring it up to whatever the code would require. Am I so, so we could say, we could add that when they, if, when they change the use. That's already a part of the That's already a part of it. And, and whatever you put in there, okay. but, as far as requirement. Yeah, I don't think we can make them do anything. So yeah, we're not. Just we're to not, rezone it, though. I, I, yeah. I agree. It's only if the use has changed. If it stays as it is, there's nothing right, that needs to be done. Right, that's going to trigger all that. Okay. Yeah. So that's the sure trigger, that's though, we is that when they change the use, when they, even though we've permitted, the, we may permit them to have those uses, once they actually start the new use, that's what triggers the requirement for the landscape buffer, Curtis? Yes. Okay. <coughs> Thoughts on that? I think that's appropriate. Mm -hmm. the, the SPD would permit the houses to remain and to remain single family residential homes, in which case, you know, there's not any real basis, I think, for us to require additional landscaping. Yeah, that makes sense. That, that's less disruption, you know, and I think that's helpful. And then if we redevelop, if the property is redeveloped, then that's when we will want to kick in the language that um, Commissioner Clare wrote about the 10 foot, you were saying 10 feet, and the, go ahead, Commissioner. Yeah, I would say 10 feet outside of any, you know, uh, utility easements. Okay. And then if, if, and then if that only means one side, you know, they can only do single loaded parking, and we um, allow or permit, you know, reduced parking, I think that's fine. Does that make sense? You? I'm not quite sure. What would the what would the utility easement be? I mean, yeah. we're going to end up it's, with a 25 foot. Uh, it's buffer. probably 15. It's probably a 15 foot easement right now. But we would maybe mm -hmm. know. But, but that's Wouldn't 25 feet. That, yeah, that's, that's not our intention. Yeah. Depending on how old it is, yeah. We, I think we're at 20 feet mm -hmm. nowadays. Because then there wouldn't be room, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the utility okay. easement can be part of the landscape buffer, in my opinion. I mean, that's how everyone else. Well, I mean, if the, if, if the it. intent is to get trees in there. To help screen, you're not going to be able to plant trees in the utility easement, uh, or they would have to trees. be of an approved species. Yeah, I mean, you could you could get like ornamental flowering trees or crepe myrtles or something of that, but you're not going to get you know good solid screening trees. Hmm. You could do. Mm -hmm. So. so it sounds like we are okay with them, with the landscape buffer being located within the easement, within the utility oh, easement, so, so long prepared. as it's appropriate landscaping. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how that needs to read. I mean, doesn't the city have their yeah. approved species list and they would comment, like utilities would say, you can't plant anything there. And then you'd say, can we plant this species? And they'd say, okay, we'll let that happen. That's how I see it. I, I yeah. guess the issue is to to truly use it as a screening component. Then you, you, you you're, there might be other species, but they would be shrubs, not well, trees. Well, then or, I mean, if we're just if we're just gonna if we're just gonna talk about screening, then I mean, a, a six foot fence and a five foot buffer is fine. I'll, I'm not I'm not saying that I don't agree. No, I, I, I do agree. I think it would be better to have ornamental. Mm -hmm. or, or uh, but, but it's true that they are very jealous of their rights of way with respect yeah, to yeah. those overhead lines. 
as anybody well, who has I mean, any in their backyard can attest. When they come through, it's like 15 foot, is it, now, currently? And I mean, if you're even close to that or they think you might come close to that in the next five or 10 years, they'll just yeah. chop your trees back. That's true in my backyard. So I, I, want, I want us to provide something that is effective. So, and, and I'm reliant upon your judgment. Yeah, well, and, and all I'm saying is, you know, usually it's, you know, it's finding the right balance of, you know, a lot of times you'll see a six foot privacy fence and then we've got canopy trees or trees that, you know, are planted outside of that to grow higher, to provide you greater height. Even because of the power feet, lines, I don't yeah. think we're gonna get that. Mm -hmm. So any trees that are gonna be, any shrubs are gonna plant on, or, not going to get that high and they might get 10 feet so the question is you know do the neighboring residents truly get a benefit out of that so could we do a higher fence or a different material do those things make a difference for the noise for the i was just eight foot minimum eight you foot know, minimum I mean, one story mm -hmm. so right that's yeah. true <laughs> go ahead curtis i'm sorry no, I'm just uh, outlining the T's you've already went through. You're requiring them to stay at one story. There's utility lines above and below. So if usually he has an idea about trees on say 20 foot centers, evergreen mm -hmm. trees. Mm -hmm. But the, so if, if you give them something like that, we assisted them in writing it. And some of the stuff was a draft that was online, but the final is what's before you. And so we, continued them several times, but so I don't know if they understand exactly what's happening now. So if we can outline it, you've already given them one story, if that's correct, that they redevelop. Mm -hmm. So that a screening with six foot fence with evergreen trees, and even from car lighting and the one story building would be effective. An eight foot fence would be even more effective. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with the eight feet. I think that gets you awfully close to where you're up to their ease in terms of impact. Mm -hmm. Lighting, sound, all of the above. Yes, I agree. So, Dustin Cigarettes Utilities Department. Um, there's a sewer line in the backyard running along the fence line. Trees need to be 10 feet away from my sewer line. Um, so. Reinforcing our point about the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Sarah, sorry. This is a tricky one. It is. Let's go with a uh, 25 foot bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> just... uh, all right, that'd be a new, that's a first for us. The code. Okay, so is there consensus that we still want to keep, so I guess we don't need the 10 feet? I mean, here's what I would say. Uh, I mean, if we're requiring a minimum eight foot site proof screen and we're limiting it to single story, is the land is getting tall trees really the the main issue here so I, maybe we would you know five feet or ten feet we're still keeping the cars a little bit further off the fence line you know and just headlights and stuff so i think that's still a valid point but what gets planted there is kind of may, maybe off the crux of the issue yeah that's a good point um so is there consensus so, on that that the screening requirement eight foot tall fence that's a five foot landscape buffer at this point because of the utility easement is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Is there consensus on that? Okay. What did you say, 10 or five? Five or 10. Five, 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 five. I mean, I feel that's. Okay. Five, okay, so let's go, now that we've handled landscape buffer, let's go to uses. We have agreed that we will eliminate, to Mr. Corber's point, eliminate the drinking establishments um, and that was something that Ms. Tran already agreed to do. We also agree that we will eliminate any of the outdoor uses, which I believe will include 8300.54, um, 8300.56, 8300.67, right? Um, I would ask that we eliminate 8300.55 too, I would think. Any other uses? Does 
the grooming use automatically mean that people have to, like in the kennel, does that mean you could have a lot of dogs in your backyard too? Is that mm, um, restricted? The, the, no, you cannot have outdoor runs with either of those uses. Gotcha. Anything else? Out of, if, if not on uses, we can move to hours of operation. I think you covered uses. Excellent. Then let's go to hours of operation. I'm in agreement on the limit to 10 p.m. I agree. For a restaurant. Mm -hmm. This is really early for a restaurant on weekends. True. Mm -hmm. They won't have anything outdoors. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, if you have I thoughts. Just, I, my thought was that was there too early mm -hmm. on a weekend for a restaurant to close at 10. So I just would, weekdays I'm fine with, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think we should go later. Midnight. Weekend, midnight? It, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. You're going to have to cut. If you're going to speak, you need to come up to the mic. So I think right now we're at, so when you say weekends, you're talking Friday, Saturday. OK. Friday, Saturday to midnight. OK. Is there a consensus? I'm serious. Commissioner LaForge? OK. Um, what's left, commissioners? We agree on the building height. Lighting below the eaves. Lighting below the eaves. Signage not visible above the roof line. And outright ban electronic signs. Yep. I think that's already in there. I think, okay. Yeah, that's all in there. Thank goodness. Hate to hear that about the sign across the street. That's why they should have never got rid of Taco Bueno. <laughs> Is it bueno? Love that Taco Bueno. <laughs> um, this is a tough one. I've got notes all over the place. Uh, how to read these TEs. Um, should I make an attempt at a motion here? Um, yep. And <laughs> We're going to guide you through. We're going to go together. It's okay. going to be great. OK, Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend approval of SPUD 1499 with TEs and <laughs> let's start. Number one, as written, um, eliminate outdoor uses include, and it, as well as uh, drinking establishments uh, as previously noted. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, I'll go ahead and read these into the record. 8300.33, okay. 8300.55, 8300.56, 8300.67. 5-4. 5-4. 5-4. 5-4. Group effort. TE number two, new parking lots uh, shall be located behind buildings that face Northwest 23rd Street, as written. TE number three, uh, any new structures uh, to be limited to one story? And then go from there with one story and so on. I actually think that would be more appropriate than just flat out limiting it to, uh, but yeah. That's good, because they couldn't do it without having to come back to us. Yeah, so TE number three would be any redevelopment of the site or new structures shall require a specific plan. But T we also want to say. <laughs> and limit and shall be limited to single I think story. Oh, so. yes. I okay. Think okay. TE number four shall require a minimum eight foot site proof screen uh, to be installed at the time of any change of use as well as a minimum five foot landscape buffer outside of the existing utility easement. 
Was that number four or number five? Do we want it outside the utility easement? Was that what we said? I think we decided not. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, okay. Just five foot buffer and yeah. the eight foot, minimum eight foot site proof screen is, is we feel is sufficient. Okay. Uh, what, what am I missing here? Um, Hours of operation. Lights yes. and signage. Uh, TE number five. Uh, TE number six. Seven. <laughs> am I on seven? Oh, this is a mess. Uh, We'll let staff number them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hours of operation shall be limited to 10 p.m. on weekdays, uh, midnight on Friday and Saturday nights uh, as considered weekends. Um, site lighting will be kept below the eaves. T yeah, TE number eight, uh, site lighting shall be kept below the eaves and signage shall not be visible above the roof line. That's all the That's notes all I, I have. had. That's all I have. Sorry for how clumsy that was. Yeah, that would be That's great. That's what you did great. Can we, <laughs> Curtis, would you, uh, and I don't know, Mr. Ms. Tran, if, if yes. you've understood what all we just discussed. Now the motion is to, rec um, Commissioner Govine, that was the mo you made the motion to recommend approval of SBUD 1499, City Council, um, subject to the extensive list of technical evaluations as read into the record. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Powers. Please cast your votes when available. Oops, sorry, I actually need to move it. And the motion passes. And I would remind remind our neighbors, we are, we're a recommending body on rezoning. So it will go before the city council in which they have the exact same ability to make changes just like we did. So if you were unsatisfied by some of the things that we uh, suggested, recommended, you still have an opportunity for them to be changed when in front of the city council. So um, we're now in line for item 22. Item 22 is previously continued. Item 23 is CPA 230001, consideration of a proposed map amendment to the comprehensive plan, changing the land use type, typology area by removing the agricultural preserve layer and changing the base layer from rural low to rural medium on land located west of Cimarron Road and north of Southwest 15th Street. Um, Baneri Mujicortiz, um, Planning Department. Um, CPA 2023-001 is changing the land use um, typology uh, by removing the um, agriculture preserve layer and changing the land use typology area from rural low to rural medium. There is an associate application, PUD 1932. Um, the area is located in south Southwest 15th Street and um, South Cimarron Road. The existing condition, um, like I mentioned previously, is agriculture preserve. It's surrounded by agriculture preserve and rural medium adjacent to the um, west. Um, in terms of land use, all the area is undeveloped. Um, in terms of zoning, um, right now it's agricultural um, with PUD um, 1832 to the west. Um, in terms of water, there is not um, access to any kind of city water in the site. There is no access to sewer. And the site is actually outside of the emergency um, time target services. Um, conditions and provisions for a higher level of services have not changed for the subject size, site. No expectation for extension of urban infrastructure 
or future fire station to improve response time. The site is not proximate to either urban low or urban future designated areas. The staff recommends denial of their requests. If you have any questions, please let me know. Excellent. This is in Ward 3, Commissioner Fraley. Con? Yep. Uh, I, I don't have any questions. When we say, when we say it's not near, um, the site is not proximate to either UL or UF. Two, maybe two streets over, it is proximate. So are we just saying within, we can't zoom out on those, huh? There's okay. slides. So in Plan OKC, they need to be adjacent. Adjacent, so be okay. I, I don't have any more questions. Any other questions? Any other questions from Commissioner? Okay, thank you. I assume we're gonna hear from the applicant as well. Uh, okay. Good afternoon, David Box, 5.2 Call for Drive. So I think the image for you is probably the most telling. What we're asking to do is to allow the 15 acres that are part of um, this track to be the same designation that the Planning Commission approved uh, last year. So my client owns the uh, approximately 100 acres west of this, and it's already zoned at a PUD to allow two acre lots. It has a preliminary plat that's been approved by the Planning Commission. This would simply add a few lots on these 15 acres. Uh, so all we're trying to do is match the rural medium to what was approved by the commission uh, last year to the west. Commissioner Fraley. We did, I think it was PUD 1832, we did approve um, the same amendment to the comprehensive plan, yeah, 1832. And while there isn't that development that's coming in that's adjacent to it, there is development that's coming in that's fairly close. So I am, uh, I am in agreement to align with the decisions that were made on PUD 1832 and uh, approve the request to amend the comprehensive plan. Um, I think I'm in agreement because that was the decision that we previously made, but I, I have concerns um, about our, about protecting the integrity of the plan. I have concerns about access to um, utilities in the long run. I have concerns about um, access to police and fire and other of those emergency, emergency services, especially since the people who buy homes in this area aren't made aware of, of the fact that, that that's the case. That's exactly why I have asked staff for us to have a study session about this because I am deeply concerned about urban sprawl for Oklahoma City. And so while I'm gonna vote yes today, and I, Mr. Vox can hear me say it today, that does not mean that I'm committed to continuing to vote for, um, for these kinds of developments happening as I become better educated on how we can address these issues in the future. So I'm, I'm gonna vote yes, but um, yeah, I just wanted everyone to be aware. Other thoughts? I agree with all that. Um, I would really like for staff, even if it's just 25 words or less to tell us why we shouldn't do this. What, what problems are we creating for ourselves with respect especially to utilities, but uh, also with respect to all the other issues that are, are sort of at play here? Um, we have done this in the past. There's no question about that. It, it does not behoove us to continue making the same mistake over and over, if indeed it is a mistake. And so I, I would just like to hear, you know, the, what it is that's uh, it's on the block here. You know, what is, it, what is it, why shouldn't we do this? From a utility standpoint, um, the water, this is a, a special situation is the Canadian County Water Authority has um, jurisdiction in this area. So therefore they actually have a water line that is close to this subdivision and according to federal law is they have to release 
that jurisdiction to us for us to serve them. Um, and so, but however, the water line that we have there is um, a 12 inch line, and so therefore it's at capacity. So we don't have the ability to serve this subdivision, um, even if the Canadian County Water Authority said that we could serve them. Um, the other thing, too, is with there is no sewer uh, within miles of this, so everything is going to be on septic. And that's just from a utility standpoint. And, and how, how, I guess, you know, the, it's sort of that leapfrog issue, which mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. that I always am concerned about. Yes, that's right. And the only way that um, sewer will get out there is if they build it. Um, however, with through the topography of that is um, gravity sewer, there really needs to be a new um, sewer treatment plant out in this area. Um, I know there has been discussions with the city of Yukon to be able to look at a, a regional um, plan to be able to see this because this is the issue that we're seeing out west for the development out there, and that's a major um, hurdle that we have to overcome. You know, I have a, I have a, a real concern about these uh, issues that are recurring and, um, you know, about, about there being sort of a different outcome for different applicants with basically the same set of facts. That's problematic. Um, if you're gonna um, regulate land, you need to do it in a way that's, you know, even-handed and, and uh, lands on people in the same way. I, too, will very reluctantly vote in favor of this today, but I feel like I, I could just as easily do the opposite. And I feel like we as a commission, I know we come and go as individual commissioners and ideas and attitudes change about things. Our previous uh, chairman was fond of telling people that, you know, uh, infrastructure follows development. Um, I, that's not a view that I agree with in terms of policy. Um, I don't think, you know, you let the Wild West run wild until suddenly one day civilization shows up. I just don't think that's going to work. But it also is creating uh, issues that are expensive for the city, and that is a problem. So um, I, I would really very much like for us to give a lot of long, hard thought about this. And if we draw that line in the sand, or maybe wherever we draw that line in the sand, I think we're going to have to be willing to defend it. And we're going to have to be willing to defend it against decisions that we have previously made yeah. ourselves. So. That's a good point. Putting you on notice. You just to chime in <laughs> it's I coming. Believe, I believe in making plans and sticking to plans, and we have a plan. And it's one of the few things we have to kind of lean back on as a, as a, a, a commission here. So uh, I'm, I'm not in support of this, this case today, but. That's all I have to say. Really looking forward to that study session. Um, any other thoughts from commissioners? Questions? I, you know what? I, I will say to Commissioner Govey, and I think that's a very principled decision and, and one that I respect and admire. It's probably a more principled decision than the one I'm about to make. <laughs> <laughs> well, but if, if I may, I mean, respectfully, the, the plan when drafted was drafted to be changed. If, if, if we had to stick to the plan, um, lots of things that are impactful and very great for the city would never have been built. I, I accept that. And, I, and one of our jobs here is to help change the plan, you know, cha make sure. changes to the plan. And, and so that, that's, that's kind of a fundamental nature of our role. So Suggestion. I get that. Okay, so. I'm but just, there are criteria about when and where that's appropriate to do. Oh, I'm it, sure, for sure. There. It's, it's it the, to be honest, it's the water and sewer issues that I'm, I'm struggling with, and we are going to be talking more about that, and, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I, I feel like we do need to work on that and get consistency. But and I've voted really against these plan changes in the past, and I'm going I'm yeah. to continue to. And, and the water and sewer is always the issue. I think the difference here is what's proposed is two-acre lots. The fights and the co concerns have typically been the half-acre lots and perhaps even the one-acre. Mm -hmm. Two-acre lots... A two-acre lot is a large lot. Mm -hmm. It's true. Those concerns yeah. typically aren't present on the two-acre lots. I mean, ODEQ allows private on-site sewer solutions at a half acre, right? And we're at, what, 4X that. So 
I, I appreciate that as well, and I also appreciate this is a tack on to a development yeah. that's already been approved. And for it's that unique. reason, I, I want to vote yes. I feel it's I'd probably. I'd love to have it. It's, <laughs> it's probably, you know, God, just sir. as well. Uh, <laughs> but, anyways. Dan gets this award. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready for a motion. Commissioner Friendly? Unless you had a comment, please go ahead. We'd love to hear it. Um, I want to add a real quick comment. Um, I think it is true, the comprehensive plan was meant, and that's why there's a procedure to do amendment. But we need to be very careful that those amendments need to be when they are appropriate. Um, in terms of the septic, um, we're going to talk a little bit about that in one of our, but we need to be very aware that we are adding density in terms of septic on this area. And when we talk in the, the study session, we're going to talk a little bit more about the concerns that more septic bring to this area, especially that they're gonna be using well water too. Mm. Um, this is an area, a sensitive aquifer too, and those are things that we need to start taking in consideration too. Um, this is the future of Oklahoma City, and we need to really think about that and how are we affecting you know, our water supply with the septic system. And again, we're gonna talk a little, not a little, a lot more about that in our comments to the section. We always talk about half an acre, one acre, lot sizes. But the truth is, we forget that the definition of the, the same um, rule is that it's for small rural um, you know, developments because it's not so much the lot size, it's the density, the amount of them in one area. So we have to be very aware of that too. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Fraley. Can I make a motion? You can. Okay. Uh, I motion approval of CPA 2023-00001. <laughs> Commissioner Fraley moves approval of, of the comp plan amendment um, 2023-00001. Um, that motion's been seconded by Commissioner Noble. Please cast your votes when available. A reluctant yes. <laughs> Do you still get awards when you get reluctant yeses? I think that should be part of our awards criteria. You can't. It's a participation ribbon. Oh, is that? Oh, that's it. Okay. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> well, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm going to hit refresh, but if vote. Okay. Do we need to do a voice vote? I missed the, the switchboard. You know, that Me never too. That was easier. Yeah. <laughs> it was easier. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Government work to continue. Co Commissioner Clare. Yay. Commissioner Powers. I object to having to do this over and over again. Yeah. Okay. I'll vote yes. Reluctant yes. Commissioner Fraley. Yay. Commissioner Privet. Reluctant yes from Commissioner Privet. Commissioner Hinkle. Aye. Commissioner Govine? Nay. Commissioner Noble? Aye. Commissioner LaForge? Aye. Uh, I also vote aye. The motion passes. We're now in line for item 24. Item 24 is the PUD that's related to the previous item, PUD 1932, a request to rezone from AA to PUD 1932 at 15425 Southwest 15th Street. Hello, David Box, 22 Colcord <laughs> Drive. Uh, this is the 15 acre track next to uh, PUD 1832. Um, the, again, the preliminary plat for 1832 has been approved and it will uh, work in conjunction with that development. There are two TEs that we agree to. Happy to answer any questions. I think Mark Zitzel came back hoping that there were more awards to be given. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. Uh, 
think he just didn't want to go back to the office. I do have one question. Yes. <laughs> um, so in, in the uses permitted, 8.1, item one, most of these are, are residential uses, but I do, I am concerned about the composting. And I got to talk with staff about the composting and asked if we can clarify or put it in a TE, the composting subject to 9350.21.1, which is specifically residential composting or composting at a residential level. We're fine with that. Okay. Any other questions, comments from commissioners? Since I voted no on the last one, do I have to vote no on this one? Or no is rules. it kind of like, no rules. It's, all, it's all water under the bridge now, I'm on board. Come on, <laughs> the water's nice. But love he's it. eliminated from award consideration. That much <laughs> yeah. is clear. Taking your award. <laughs> <laughs> any, other, any other questions, comments? Seeing none, Commissioner Fraley. I recommend approval of PUD 1932 with an additional current TEs to remain an additional TE of uh, section 8.1 item 1 item D composting subject to subdivision regulation is that right chapter 59, chapter 59 9350.21.1 the, uh, Commissioner Fraley moves to recommend approval of PUD 1932 to City Council, subject to the technical, technical evaluation uh, as read into the record. Um, that motion has been seconded, I hope, by Commissioner LaForge. Please cast your votes when available. Did we get the system up? And it's up and running. All right, so and the close. motion passes. <laughs> so close. Thank you. I, in all seriousness, in terms of awards, uh, the chair did receive an award. He was named to the 40 under 40. Oh. So that's a real award. And I share that honor with, with Mark Zidzow. Zidzow. Up there too. <laughs> so. My awards are all made up, so well done, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. And that concludes our separate items uh, to be heard. There are no additional items. We're on to commu uh, communications and reports. Any reports from Planning Commission committees? Seeing none, we're on to Planning Commission members. Commissioner Clare? Nothing for me. Commissioner uh, Powers? Commissioner Fraley? I don't have anything. Commissioner Privet? Nope. Commissioner Hinkle? Uh, Govine? Uh, no, nope. Commissioner Noble? That was the longest two-hour meeting ever, <laughs> wasn't it? It was. It was a long, it was long, long two hours. A long, short meeting after we just had, you know, six hours. Uh, I think it, it is a, a good thing for us to remember in terms of why we try to work out issues before they come before us so that we don't end up designing things from the horseshoe because that's the way it goes. It takes forever, it's complicated, it's confusing, it's, you know. Mm -hmm. And this was kind of a special circumstance, but um, I, I think perhaps we should um, reinvigorate uh, the, the practice of giving applicants that we send away to do PUDs or SPUDs some input, maybe it would at least cut down. I mean, it was a little bit iffy of whether that would come back to us or not. Exactly. But, um, you know, yeah, there was a lot that we had to kind of uh, hobble together there to make that one work, and that's, we don't want to do that every day. I, I agree, and I, I'd ask commissioners, you know, as you're seeing the controversial cases that you think an SPUD might be required for, go ahead and have those conversations with the applicant in advance so we can, we can work that out. I think, you know, most of us have been on long enough to sort of know the issues that each other might be worried about, um, but I'm certainly happy to help facilitate those conversations as well um, if you need help, but I completely agree. It's very hard to legislate from the horseshoe, and we should try to avoid it, you know, to the extent we can. I agree. 
It's a good group. We get the award. Qu question for other commissioners. Do, do, you, um, do you often contact applicants yourself to meet yeah. with them? You request meeting with yep. them. Yeah, okay. I do. I too, I've been waiting for them to contact me, and so when they haven't, I haven't reached out, and that's probably uh, something I should uh, take away and do more of. I not only open but want to hear about anything that's coming along in my ward. Of course, I've, I don't have the volume that some other commissioners have. So, yeah, I always I let them know so they can steer people to me. And if I get, you know, uh, word that somebody has been in to ask about something, I go ahead and contact them. I think it's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a good practice. For one thing, it helps you control the timing. You know, you, what you don't want is to get that phone call two days before a hearing. Which is usually, yeah, that's what tends to, to happen. We had a little back and forth on, because I know staff was writing up that spud for them, and there was a draft that circulated around, but, you know, there's other issues that w weren't really, hadn't come to light at that point. So, uh, anyways, appreciate the suggestions. Agree. All right. Right. <laughs> Are, why can't we just be fun like Ward 5? <laughs> um, okay, Planning Department. Nothing. Municipal Counselor's Office. Um, citizens to be heard. Where's Mr. Warrior? I'm going to have to, if he's watching, Another where one. are you, Mr. Warrior? Um, okay, other business. Seeing that we have completed our business, we are now adjourned. And it's official with the gavel.